I think this is a sentiment that many of us feel at times. The squirrels are calling and I must go. That was a present from um, Debbie's dog, dog <laughs> at Christmas. Yeah. Just to keep her in line, you know. Now, what is uh, Debbie working on right now? Okay, this was the ring that we cast the other day, and I pre-finished it. Got the texture going on in there, and I'm going to set the bezel, solder the bezel in, and set the stone. Ooh. This was a, a, a pair of uh, earrings that came from a family. Uh, she decided she wanted to split the earrings into a ring and a pendant. So we'll be setting the the nicer of the two e earrings into the ring and then the, the other into the pendant. Okay, so that's the 14 karat gold, royal yellow gold ring. Yep, there's the button it came off of. So okay, it's wow, sitting there like that. Done a lot of work on it. Yep. So that's a bunch of sanding, filing, grinding, yes. cutting. Yes. And then you'll be stone setting. So the pendant yep. that you just showed us, say a little more, bit more about that. That doesn't look like uh, in the same raw state. No, this was a manufactured piece, and um, in order to hold on to it really well, I, I've put it into pitch, so it won't wobble or um, move on me when I when I set the other diamond. And the pitch is uh, just a. A temporary measure. You heat it and, and embed the piece in it, then heat it to release it. Yep. And then what are these other little projects up there? Oh, those are just miscellaneous bezels for the rustic diamonds that are lurking about on my bench top somewhere. <laughs> You're going to set those later. Okay. Yeah. I sense another operation coming along here. So what have you done now? I'm getting ready to solder the bezel in and I want the bezel to be level. So we have this nifty pair of tweezers that we use for soldering in things into rings. We have a flat spot and a shank holder here. So oh yeah, okay. And you tighten it down and so and that's you holding your little at it your bezel sure. in place. Yeah. I think I forget we have those. I, I know. That's why I have two in my Oh, because one of them's mine? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you're going to? I'm going to dip it into boric acid and alcohol. And that's our fire coat, which helps prevent oxidation as we solder. So I'm just going to let that. And we flux it. Forms the glassy substance that protects uh, the surface. We saw it in the castings how it was bubbling on the button of the bronze piece. So I've also drilled the hole out. I don't know if you can see that. I've drilled the hole out so the base of the bezel is exposed so I can go in from underneath and well, uh, do a solder on the thing. So instead of trying to solder from the top, which has that beautiful texture on it, I'm going to solder from the back side. Oh yeah, so the solder will flow toward the heat, yeah. your torch is at the back, and the solder will flow there instead of obliterating the little grooves in yeah, the front. And when I dipped it into my boric acid and alcohol, things shifted crooked. a little bit, so I'm just going to make sure it's back on track here. Sometimes we measure precisely, other times it's really just how it looks. There's this balance between measurably and visually balanced. Okay, I'm going to use medium. 14 medium. karat medium solder. Medium solder. Let's see. We have extra easy. Easy, medium, and hard, hard, and then you go into higher carats to get even harder. But you can't use a higher carat solder than your the material the piece is made out of or you end up melting things. Cut little pieces since she's going to do her pick soldering method. Find my pick, two of them. That's pretty clean. She's using a fairly neutral flame. So if I tried to go in here and solder with hard soldered, I, I would probably end up melting something. 
because I'm under the, you know, I'm getting this area hotter before this area that is being actually soldered on. So that's why I'm going to use medium. That's a wise choice, having melted a few things using inappropriate solders. When you have multiple operations, multiple soldering operations on one piece, then you can sequence your solders from hard to medium to soft if need be. But this is a single soldering operation. Typically you'll use the hardest one you can get away with. I got a nice flow almost all the way around both directions, so I'm just going to make sure that I can Always cut more solder than you think you're going to need. Yeah, I do. Okay, there, there's a little ball of solder right there. And let's see when it flows. She's evenly heating, drawing the heat all over the piece. Ooh, I see it. It's going. Yep. Yeah, the even heating is your key to getting your solder to flow. Yep. Got it? All the way around. Looks great. Okay, fantastic. Now, when I, I'm just going to make sure when I pickle it that it's it has flo flowed all the way around on the, s the top edge of the bezel as well. And if it hasn't, then I'll reheat it again. Really. Right. And the pickling process in between will remove the flux, any contamination. Because um, to continue the flow of solder, you need to reestablish clean conditions and then reheat it from the start. No, I think we're good, though. Yeah, let, really me, let me nice. hold it right there for a second. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's got a nice seal between that beautiful texture and the and the bezel. Gosh, that looks great, Deb. Yeah. Let it cool a little bit before you shock it. Still pretty hot. Yeah, but that's okay because That's okay. That's gonna be hammered. Yep, it's gonna slightly anneal the white gold and then be a little bit easier for setting. So we'll check back for setting.